Hi, this is Chris Terrell with Everyday VBA. In this video, we're going to go, be going over selection. Specifically, we're going to be going over cell selection. Um, but we're going to start at the top. We're actually going to start at worksheet, then go down to range, and then go down to cells. And the reason is, is because cells belongs to each one of those. So cells belong to worksheets, um, cells belong to ranges, ranges belong to worksheets, etc. And so the more, the better that you understand that, the the, the easier this is going to make sense. Um, over the long term. So it may take a little bit more time to just kind of go through this, but it is going to be well, well worth it. So I've got my Visual Basic Editor open. You can hit Alt F11. That'll take you here. Um, you can also go to uh, Developer and then VBE. We're going to call this Subselect. Now we can't call it Subselect. we got to call it Subselect Cells. Uh, it won't like Select because Select is a chosen word. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is just go over the easiest way to select a sheet. So it's going to be sheets, and then whatever that sheet name is, we're going to go sheet one dot select. Now select does exactly what you think it will do. It actually selects that sheet. So if we run this, it's not going to do anything because I'm already selected on that. Um, now if I change this to sheet two, you will notice if I run that real quick, I run that macro, it goes to sheet two. Now one of the important things to understand about selection or selecting is that when you hit select, um, if you are referencing a sheet that is not active, it will give you an error. So, for example, if I went um, sheet two dot cells one one, this is going to actually give me an error. Uh, it gives me an error there because I don't, I'm not telling it to do anything. And I got to hit select. I got to spell select correctly. This is a lot more difficult than it seems. Okay, all right, so we're good. So I'm going to hit F8. And this is going to give me an error. It's going to say, hey, range or class failed. It's runtime 104. What happened? Well, what happened was is you can't select something that's not active. So that's kind of a first thing to kind of run into. Now, one of the nice things about selection and selecting things is you can see what the code is actually doing. And that's one of the nice things about VBA is when you're coding, you can actually hit select and you're good to go. So I'm going to leave that um, open. I'm going to put sheet one and then we're just going to type in select. So now what's a range? Well, a range, the easiest way to think of a range is uh, it's just anything like that. That's a range. Now this this is actually a range as well. If I just highlight that's just range D6. And the easiest way to reference these sheets or is just to, or not the, I said sheet, to reference these ranges is just like you would in a formula. So we're going to go A1. We're going to go dot select. Now this is also a cell, which is fine. Uh, you'll notice it's selected A1. Now, if you want to select a larger range, then you would do it exactly like you would a formula. Like if you did a sum formula, you would type um, A1 and you would sum to, let's say, B10. You hit select. Now I'm going to hit F8 again. It's going to select A1, and then it's going to have that. It's going to have that uh, select from A1 to B10. So the same is true for cells. So you can go cells, and cells are a row and a column index. So that is actually A1. That is equivalent to A1. So if I come in through here, I'm hitting F8. I'm going through this. It's going to select that whole thing. Now it's going to select that single cell. Now I said that I was going to do um, within ranges. Now let's just say uh, we've got a range here. And we're going to do this, we're going to go C1 to D10. Now, I can also go, if I go select here, it's going to select that range. But I can also select a subset of that range because that range has cells. Now, obviously, it has, if we come over here, it has that cell um, if we visually just look at it. So I'm going to go range.cell. Uh, we're going to go C1, D10. dot cells dot we're going to go row two column one which that's going to give me c2 when i hit select so let's just go through and see if it if it does what is expected so you notice i've given it a range and i've given it a cell reference within that range that's important and it's going to select that and it does now there's a couple other selection pieces so um the another selection is active cell so active 
this is good. Now what can you do with active cell? Well, you may want to know the row, right? So that would be a common, uh, common thing to do. I'm just going to hit debug print. Because what that's going to do is it's, I guess, go print, right? Um, it's going to actually print that in my immediate window. If you don't have your immediate window, um, just go to view and click immediate window. You can hit control G. I'm going to drag this up real quick. And I'm going to say what my active row is. Now you'll know that that's two. It's going to give me two. You could also do the same thing for the column. Those are pretty common. Um, again, we're in column three. Uh, and I, what I would encourage you to do is on that active cell, is just go through here. So you can activate it. You could add a comment if you wanted. Um, some of this stuff you don't really use, like for example, you, you probably wouldn't use an autofill for a cell, but it's still an option. Auto fit would make sense. Um, borders around, perfect. If you want to put borders, you can also use borders, which is borders.line. Um, there's some additional information there. Uh, you could clear it. So you can use any of these uh, properties and methods on this active cell. And so if you go through these, you, you'll find ones that you want. You can change your font, you can center it, you can merge it. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with Active Cell. Um, typically, Active, Active Cell is pretty awesome, actually. Um, it's good to uh, just know where you're at. Um, so let's look at one other thing. Let's look at Special Cell. So we're going to go Active Cell. Uh, we're going to go, actually, we're going to just do Cell. So we're going to go um, Cells dot Special Cells. Now, what are special cells? Well, if you hit parentheses, the one that I like to use is really the last cell. And the reason I use this is I look for the last cell row or the last cell column because that's going to tell me what Excel thinks is the um, last row or last column. And I'm actually going to print this again. I'm going to do a debug print, and I'm going to put this um, the row and the column. And this will tell me what Excel thinks for this active sheet, the sheet that I'm on. Um, it's going to tell me specifically um, what that last row and that last column is. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy over this, hit F8, F8. So it's going to say, wait a sec, I've got 16 rows, which makes sense because I'm right here. And I've got three columns, which makes sense because I was actually typing and selecting information over here. So that's uh, pretty awesome. You've got special cells. The other thing that you can use is you can use cells.end. Um, and what that is going to do is it's going to allow you to go a specific direction. So that is equivalent to um, basically control down. So for example, if we came in here and we went active cell dot cells dot end and we went x xl up dot select. So that is our, that's just like hitting control up. We're going to do that. And it's going to basically go to that up, that XL up or control, what control arrow up would do. You could also do XL, XL down, XL right, XL left. So that's actually another cool thing. The other thing that I want to show you just kind of lastly, um, and your options are up, down, left, right. Makes sense. The last thing I want to just show you is offset. Now what's offset? It took me forever when I started using Excel. Of course, when I use Excel, um, I was learning from books. That was back in the day. Life is so much better now. Um, but what is offset? Well, sometimes you don't necessarily want to go to your cell. You want to go to the cell to the left or to the right or up up some or down some. Well, that's what up, that's what offset does. So if we came in here, and I'm going to actually just go uh, range. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, we're going to go range we're going to go d9 and then we go select okay that's going to select that cell and now all we're going to do um, is we're going to do a little offset on that now this is going to select that now we wouldn't necessarily have to do this in two lines of code like i'm going to show you how to do it but that's one way to do it so we're going to go range d9 Sounds a lot like denied, which is kind of funny. And then we're going to go offset. Now, the way offset works is you can offset by a column or a row. So we're going to offset this by one row. 
and by one column, okay, which means that we're going to go plus one down, plus one over, and I'm just going to show you exactly what that does. I need to tell it to select or it's going to yell at me, which it did. And that's exactly what it did. Now, a couple other things that you can do on these, just so that you kind of see what you can do, is you actually can do minus numbers. So if we do minus one, minus one, it's going to get us get us over there. All right? It's going to go minus one, minus one, which makes sense. Uh, quick caveat on this: if we went minus one hundred or one thousand, you're going to get an error because it's going to say, "Wait a sec, this doesn't exist. I can't. It's it, it's not defined. I can't go to a negative." negative row or negative column number. Um, the same would be true if you went beyond the bounds of the rows and columns. So if you put 2 million as, as an offset for a row, you're going to get an error. So that is a quick overview of how to select using uh, VBA. I want to do one quick kind of reference thing here, just kind of a best practice, just as we kind of finish up here. And that is, depending on how strict you want to be, Depending on how you want to do your code, you may want to use the active sheet. And one of the nice things about selection is you're able to select the information and you're able to see it. But there are times where you want to kind of make that more strict. And so, for example, if you wanted to make this where you had to be on sheet one and you had to select in A1, you would actually type in this, sheets, sheet one, dot cells, one one dot select and that would actually give you that that selection now if you were on sheet two you would also get an error but you may actually want to have it more strict like that because if you're bouncing back and forth between sheets you may actually want to have that in place and so the proper way to do this if you did decide to do this um, would be sheets sheet one dot select and so you would do it this way um, and that would basically select that sheet, and then it would select the sheet, um, the cell one one on that sheet, and that's a perfect, perfectly way, perfectly good way to do it. Now, just keep in mind, every time that you do select a sheet, it does slow the computer down because it actually has to process that view. Um, so just keep that in mind. And one last thing before we kind of get off, this is kind of a bonus, an extra tip, is really um, if you already have stuff selected, you can actually use selection. And so that selection is basically everything that is selected. So um, I'm going to go selection.row. I'm going to put in a debug print. And really, this is going to say, whatever selected, what is that row? Now, if I had multiple things selected, it would actually just give me, um, if I had multiple things selected, it would just give me, I'm going to just drag this down. Um, and all this code is actually going to be available. Um, I include my code in all my videos. Okay, we're dragging this down, and it's going to give me the row, and it's going to give me. It's going to say I'm in row A. So once you have something selected, if you want to do something with that selection, the way about that, the way to basically do that is to reference selection. So if we wanted to, um, I've got. If we wanted to bold whatever was in our selection, we would type in selection. Dot. Font. Dot. Bold equals true. I think that's actually right. Um, it may actually not even be true. I'm just going to, that is correct. And it did bold it. So that's one way to do Once you have selected, you can actually use the selection function uh, to change that number. Now, you can minimize that. So, for example, I wouldn't have to necessarily go selection. I could actually just type in whatever range I wanted to do that. And so, what that would look like in this case is it would be range uh, B8 dot font dot bold equal true. That would do the exact same thing. So that's a quick rundown on selection. I know that that's a lot, um, but the, the main thing to remember is that a cell belong can belong to a range, and a cell can also belong to a worksheet, um, and a range obviously belongs to a worksheet, and that's kind of your parent-child parent -child relationship there. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have not subscribed to Everyday VBA, please do that. If you have any comments or questions or like this video, please leave it. I do appreciate that, and I hope you enjoyed.